welcome back to this week's podcast episode. Uh, we are continuing our series, and last week we answered the question, what does the Bible say about homosexuality? And just gave a, a basic um, a basic just line and uh, just on the subject, verses and things like that. And the important thing is, is we just want to follow what the Bible says. And if the Bible says something about a certain topic, we want to align ourselves to what the Bible says. And that continues on with this topic as well. We're answering popular Bible questions that people may ask. And this one today is, what does the Bible say about drinking alcohol? Is alcohol a sin? What does it clearly lay out for us in Scripture? And I want to talk about that today. And the line is very clear when it comes to this topic of, when it comes to wine, being drunk. Being drunk is where the line is and where uh, it is a sin. You see that in Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 18. It says, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So how many times does God have to write something for it to be considered important? Once. And he already written down here, be not drunk with wine. Well, he goes on in Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 21. He's listing off all of these works of the flesh. And what does he list? He lists murder. He lists idolatry. He lists fornication. He lists um, all of these things, wrath, envy. And in the middle of this whole list, he lists drunkenness. And so this is definitely an important thing. It's a work of the flesh to become drunk and to be drunk on wine. Uh, Galatians 5.21. We also have Proverbs 23, verses 20 and 21. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. Well, what does a wine bibber mean? It means someone who drinks a lot of wine. He says, don't even hang out with those people that drink a lot of wine. Those are wine bibbers. So the Bible is very clear, and the line is there on being drunk is a sin when it comes to being drunk on wine. He said to, to stay away from it. Why? Because it messes up with your focus. It messes up where... You're not able to operate the way that you need to operate. Um, and so he says it's better to stay away from those things. And when you have someone like Solomon writing these things, he's had plenty of experience with these things. And he's like, hey, you know, the wisest man in all the Bible, stay away from some of these things. And he, he lists some other verses we're going to get into as well. Um, but what else does alcohol do? What, is, what else does it affect? Well, alcohol, we see, affects your health. Andrew Humerman, one of the, uh, it's actually one of the most top listened to podcasts right now, um, the Huberman Lab, he said that it's better to drink no alcohol than any alcohol at all. Uh, he said for every drink you have, according to the UK Brain Bank, bank it affects your brain in a bad way, way and affects your brain cells. Um, drinking does worse for you than it does good. More than 178,000 people die each year because of alcohol or alcohol related. It doesn't just affect you. It affects other people as well. A heart surgeon was listing out things to completely stay away from because he deals with a lot with hearts, with surgeries, different things like that with health. And he said the four things you want to stay away from one of those things in the list above, like one of the top things is stay away from alcohol. He said it's toxic to every cell in your body. So we see alcohol, it affects your health. And they say just, just, drinking one drink, every drink you drink, it affects your body and your health. It's not even just about getting drunk, just drinking it in general affects your health. So alcohol affects your health. But secondly, in the Bible and scripture, alcohol was prohibited for people that God wanted to use in a big way. We see that with the priests in Leviticus 10, 9, the priests were prohibited from drinking wine in general because they were supposed to be an example. Number two, you have Samson. And number six, three, a, a Nazarite was not to drink wine in any way. Or, this is interesting, Samson's mother as well. You also have in 1 Samuel 1, Hannah was commanded not to drink wine, and then God was given her a child. We, have, we see in Proverbs 31 that kings or priests were prohibited from drinking wine because they were in positions of leadership. They were an example. And, and you know what? I find this interesting. This is just an interesting connection that the Bible in Revelation 1 calls us priests and kings. And so I just kind of find that interesting that we're called that, and then priests and kings in the Bible were prohibited from drinking wine. It's just, it's just an interesting connection or interesting thought. So alcohol affects your health. Alcohol was prohibited for people who God wanted to use in a big way. But lastly, on today's podcast, this episode, we're going to do a part two. 
alcohol drinkers, in, according to the Bible, are considered not wise. Proverbs chapter number 20, verse number one, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. When it comes to the subject of alcohol and wine and different things like that, we think that we can handle it. We think that we could, uh, well, I know that affected so-and-so, but it's not going to affect me. And we get deceived thinking that we're okay with drinking it. And you're considered not wise by thinking that you can drink it and be okay. And so for, for the wisest man in the Bible and for God to inspire this scripture to say, if you're deceived by this, you're not wise. And so that's one thing in and of itself that's important to me for the wise man in the Bible and God to say, if you're deceived by wine, deceived by thinking you can take it, but deceived by thinking you can drink it, you're not wise. That's enough for me to say, I don't want to be considered not wise. And so he says that, well, what's another passage? And we're going to get into this a little bit later. Proverbs 23, 31, it says, look not upon the wine when it is red, when it is fermented, do not look upon the wise wine because why there's so many things throughout scripture where wine and alcohol all alcoholic wine has messed up people's lives i mean we can go through the whole and there's more bad mention of it than good in the throughout scripture we can go through all of the the stories and there's not one time where it really benefited you more than it did evil there's times where they used it for medicinal purposes but that like there was significant low uh, alcohol levels back then compared to what we have now. And that's what they had to use for medicinal purposes. We have different what we use now nowadays. Um, we always try to make justifications, but alcohol and wine do worse for you. And, and I have a bunch of friends here. I have another friend here who's dealt with this and he can tell you from personal experience that alcohol, wine, all these things, they do worse for you than they do good. And it's better to stay away from it in general. So what do we see? We see the line Drunkenness is a line. We see how alcohol affects us. We see it affects our health. God wants us to stay away from it uh, for the people that he wanted to use in a great way. And we see if you drink it, you're not wise. So this is what Bible sa- the Bible says about the subject and, uh, and how important it makes it. We're going to get into more of the question, did Jesus make alcoholic wine or did he drink it himself? And we're going to do that on the part two of this series of answering Bible questions in 10 minutes or less. So thank you so much for tuning in with this episode. We're going to jump back in on the next one, and we look forward to being able to, to have you join us. Thank you. <laughs>